This time we'll be exploring the shifted outlook which occurs when one has a paradigm shift regarding their own longevity, or with some term, radical life extension, and in particular, the repercussions of this on, broadly speaking, spirituality. Coming up. Here at Numenosophy Academy, we believe in expanding consciousness, in taking that pilgrimage into the imaginal. I'm Lewis, and if you'd like to be part of Numenosophy, do subscribe and click that bell. I'll begin with what may sound like a strange confession on my part. I believe that there is a good chance that I will never die. A good chance, barring any freak occurrence, that I will still be alive, still be conscious, a century from now, two centuries from now, on into the future. And I've thought this for over a decade. I've believed this. A conclusion that I reached while reading around the topic. In a nutshell, the idea is that life expectancy will gradually improve over the next couple of decades until it reaches the point at which it is improving faster than we are aging. Now, I'm not going to get into any of the science regarding this here. It's not my area. If you want to go down that rabbit hole, I'd recommend looking up David Sinclair and Audrey de Grey. My concern is the implications. The implications of this belief upon our own sense of self, our own subjectivity, and our own spiritual outlook. Numinosophy, my channel, my system, concerns modern spirituality, a broad approach which encompasses transcendentalism pertaining to one's own authentic experience in relation to nature or reality, perennialism pertaining to those universal truths and wisdom that we can discern that go beyond any single tradition or religion, and a concern for the unconscious, our interior worlds or interior dimensions all of which ties into what unfolds naturally for us as we progress in our own self-discovery, as we come to know thyself and practice being still and silent with oneself, practice being present in the moment and orientated to the now. It may seem odd then to consider numinosophy in relation to issues of longevity and radical life extension. I think, though, there are a few good reasons to do so. Spirituality and science are very often pitted against one another, if not explicitly, often implicitly. And certainly our intuition here is doing its thing. If we're intuitively inclined to think in spiritual terms, which if you're here, you probably are, then you may be inclined to not even entertain issues concerning the direction of science. It's all part of this strange aspect of our human psychology. We hear an idea, it latches immediately onto a feeling which for us determines its validity. And I say that as someone who puts a lot of stock in the power of our intuition. It's certainly a topic I intend to return to in the future. In this area, however, anything pertaining to medical or technological exponential change, it does seem to fall short. So I've already laid my cards on the table. I think this is coming. It's not a question of if, but of when. And so spirituality accommodating this change is not optional. It's ultimately obligatory. Another part of this pitting of science against spirituality that you hear from some quarters is the notion that science or some kind of extrapolated scientific ideology will ultimately supersede spirituality. And I see no reason whatsoever to presuppose that. Rather, to the contrary, spirituality seems to be exceedingly adaptive. And furthermore, spirituality is really just the stuff of life. It concerns the narratives which give us meaning, what we live for. It concerns coming to know ourselves. It concerns beauty and creativity. I don't believe radically longer lives will erode the significance of these things or spirituality. 
In fact, I think the exact opposite. It'll make these questions seem more important than ever before. But that's not to say that spirituality will not need to adapt. It will. Different questions, different priorities will entail a different kind of spirituality. Perhaps the aspect of spirituality that does seem most superfluous in a world of radical life extension is the aspect concerning the afterlife. I would say that for myself, for numinosophy, metaphysical speculation regarding the nature of the afterlife is almost entirely absent. And there's, there's a reason for that. In the evolution of human consciousness, it does appear to be becoming an increasingly irrelevant question. Even within religions that do very much have an afterlife component to them, the significance of that component does appear to be eroding. Not universally so, but it's trending in that direction. In Christianity, for instance, there's a move away from a preoccupation with entering the pearly gates into the kingdom towards manifesting or living into the kingdom on the earth. Thy kingdom come. And this shift, I think, is happening because, in part, people are just living longer. It's no longer just about getting all your ducks in a row before you meet your maker. Increasingly, yesterday's 50-year-olds are becoming today's 70-year-olds. A couple more healthy decades have a huge effect on one's outlook. Just imagine what a couple more healthy centuries would do. The shift, I think, has to be a trajectory towards and into our own interiority. It's not about gritting your teeth until you get to the next thing, whether that's gritting your teeth until you receive your pie in the sky when you die, or more atheistically, gritting your teeth until your next thrill or your next distraction. Rather, this paradigm shift entails finding a greater peace within yourself and within the world you inhabit, which in turn entails a greater focus on manifesting or creating a more peaceable world around yourself, a space that can sustain you spiritually, emotionally, intellectually, more or less indefinitely, which is a big ask. Gone are the days when you worked full time, nine to five until your retirement, and then you just sat on the couch waiting for death to catch up with you. We need to be formulating sustainable models. The question of boredom comes into this as well. I've heard objections before that living considerably longer lives is undesirable because that boredom would set in, it'd be unbearable. I find this idea, quite frankly, mad. It suggests a complete deficit of intellectual curiosity and spiritual imagination. I believe there are depths within us that we have not yet begun to fathom. Ralph Waldo Emerson, the father of transcendentalism, spoke about aligning ourselves with the slower rhythms of nature, the changing seasons. And almost by necessity, this slower, less frenetic, more contemplative approach to life would surely need to take center stage. Living considerably longer lives, we would be aware like never before of the evolving nature of reality the changing skyline, the shifting topography, the death of animals, of pets, all intensifying this awareness. The contemplative life entails this kind of slower, perambulating approach to what we're exploring. We could afford to take our time to inhabit paradoxical points of view in order that we might fully appreciate our own thought world. So I regard these as initial thoughts concerning the spiritual implications of radical life extension. If you think this is a worthwhile topic to delve into and uh, you'd like to go further, then you can help get the conversation started. Please do share, like, and comment on this video below. Uh, do you think spirituality would continue to be important to you if you had another century to live, say? Thanks for watching. If you'd like to watch more Numinosophy Academy, you can click right here. See you next time.